Welcome to another installment of Friday q and I hope you're all fantastic to everybody who submitted a question for this week. Thank you very much. If you want to submit a question for next week's Q&A, put it in the comment section below. And a reminder, if you are in Melbourne on August the 5th or Sydney on August the 7th, I will be in town playing a show with Ragdoll. Cannot wait. Very, very excited about those shows. Great lineups on all of them. And I look forward to getting to hang out with some of you in the flesh. Until then, let's answer some questions. What do you reckon, Tibby? What was my favorite amp at the Zen Amps Vault? If you haven't been keeping up with the channel, I actually did a video about that. I really, really liked the Wizard MTL amp. And, you know, we're talking out of dozens of the world's greatest high gain heads. I liked it because it kind of combined my favorite elements of like an aggressive vintage Marshall style thing with gobloads of low end and high gain crunch on there. You can check out the video on my channel and I would highly recommend you go and subscribe to the Zen Amplification channel because they have some incredible videos up already and there are many more to come. That was an absolute treat to go over there and film at their amp vault. Speaking of crunchy amps, the Carolan Takana model in the Axe FX, my thoughts on said model. I've actually tried the real amp and I really enjoyed that. That was in the early days of the channel. I was lucky enough to borrow one off a friend who owned one. You can check out those videos on the channel. A lot has changed on this channel since then, but I went back and listened to those during the week and I still really like the way it sounds. I believe the idea with that particular amp is it's just a kind of versatile gigging working musicians amp. And it was one of those things that wherever you set it, it never sounded bad. In fact, you can just set everything at noon, crank it up, and you've got some great clean crunch and lead tones in there. And one I should probably revisit on the Axe FX and maybe do a five minute tones video with. Living in Australia, is it hard to get gear? Definitely. Especially living in Perth, because it seems like Australia is pretty low on the food chain when it comes to actually getting musical instruments and gear related to musical instruments. And then Western Australia is even further down that food chain within Australia. Luckily, eBay and Reverb and e-commerce sites exist. So I do most of my buying online nowadays, and especially over the last couple of years, you know, it's been so easy to basically go online anywhere and have something express shipped to you. So that's kind of how I have traditionally got around that. I actually remember the first pedal I ever bought online, and it was probably the second or third pedal that I ever bought, was a Keeley four knob compressor. And I kind of opened up the floodgates of having access to wonderful, glorious boutique gear. The first time I went to the United States, so that was kind of mind blowing because I just walked into a guitar center and they had everything. And then they had a used section which had everything plus more. And I was very much a kid in a candy store. And every time I go back to the States, I kind of inevitably go a little bit silly and come back with a few too many toys. What's my current skate setup? A uh, couple of you have noticed that I've got a deck back here. I actually bought this deck. Let me move over here and show you what it is. So this was a complete that I bought from a skate store that had a massive sale. Uh, this one has tensor trucks and I forget what the bearings are, but it's an enjoy setup with some, I think some 52 mil wheels and I forget if this is probably like an eight and a quarter or something like that. I've got big feet, so I kind of like a wider deck. I do have another setup with like a blank deck and I can't remember what trucks I've got in there. I really need to check, but I do have some uh, China bones on there, which are awesome and some really nice wheels. And that's the one that I have mostly used. I've literally popped a single Ollie on this particular deck and then put it back here. It's the middle of winter here and it's super wet everywhere. So I haven't really had a chance to do any skating as soon as springtime rolls around. And I've got some time though, I will probably take this particular board out. I mentioned earlier in the video that we have some Australian tour dates coming up, August the 5th in Melbourne and August the 7th in Sydney. See you there. Do I think we'll tour the USA anytime soon? I really hope so. We have been talking about it and it's something that I have been reaching out to some people that I know about. Again, with the way international travel is at the moment and the unpredictability around so many other things, we don't have anything definite, but I would love to get over next year and even just play a handful of shows because it's something that I've missed so much. 
What MIDI controller am I using with my rack? At the moment, I'm actually just using an air step controller for that. The reason being it also has relay jacks on it, so I can use it to switch my Boogie Mark 4 channels. The Boogie Mark 4 doesn't have MIDI, but I can also use the MIDI functionality to switch different effects. I actually don't use the MIDI functionality that much. I kind of tend to set and forget the rack units at the moment. I've got a PCM81 and an Eclipse in my rack with the Mark IV, and the Eclipse lives on the vintage delays, and the PCM81 lives on the concert hall. So it's pretty basic, but if I do want to have MIDI control on there, I've got the Air Step, and it's a great affordable little controller. Have I ever tried a Boogie V-Twin? I have not. I would love to. It was a pedal that I spent a lot of hours and days lusting over back in the day when Boogie Gear was incredibly inaccessible price-wise, like when I was a teenager and the Australian dollar was at like 50 US cents, you know, a dual rectifier head was something like $5,000. And then to get the matching cabinet was like another three and a half grand or something like that. And then a V-twin was a kind of similar ridiculous price. I actually was sent a bunch of old music catalogs by a viewer of the channel. And I'm looking forward to doing a video about those and just kind of comparing prices and functionality then to stuff now. But yeah, long story short, haven't tried a V-Twin. I really want to get around to doing it. Have we ever had security issues at shows, whether at home or on tour? Not really, aside from, you know, the kind of random drunk person getting up and thinking it's a great idea for them to take the microphone. One that always comes to mind, and this was a total Benny Hill moment, was we were playing a show down south here in Western Australia and this guy got on stage, admittedly like a kind of low stage, and like went to take the microphone off Ryan and Ryan just kind of, he didn't shove him, he didn't push him, he just sort of got his arm and was like, you know, stop, don't do that. But in that small little motion, he managed to kind of send this guy off balance and then they slipped and they tried to grab the mic stand thinking it would hold them up and of course it didn't and they fell off the stage took the mic stand, took a monitor with them, the whole crowd parted. And it was one of these really, really bizarre moments where the whole room went silent and we all looked around. And, you know, this guy was much, much bigger than Ryan. And I feel like I said something kind of funny about like, you know, not wanting to mess with him because, you know, some bizarre esoteric martial art, but I actually can't remember what I said. I may not have said anything at all. The moment may have just spoken for itself. So yeah, there's been that. I remember one year in the States, someone was requesting a song and they kind of, you know, walked up to kind of threaten to punch Ryan again. And in that very, very small window, I had run across the stage and taken my guitar off my back and had it Keith Richards style by the neck, uh, kind of ready to intervene. And looking back at it, again, this person was way bigger and way stronger than I was. So I don't know what I was going to do, but uh, yeah, nothing happened. But yeah, that was a little bit hairy. Uh, there's a few things kind of coming back, but I mean, aside from that, I guess we've probably had more hair raising run-ins with like kangaroos running in front of the car when we're driving late at night on the way back from a gig, which is a definite hazard here in Australia, causes a lot of accidents. It's not fun because I find kangaroos incredibly cute and they're gorgeous animals and you never want to hit one with a car. Luckily, we have never hit one and Hopefully it stays that way, but we've had a few very close run-ins and a run-in with a Wedgetail Eagle once, which very, very nearly took out the entire car because these things are massive. So yeah, Aussie animals, they'll get you. One last one for this week. It ties into a question from last week that I had about dealing with mistakes when playing live. What about tips for people who are new to performing live? You can do what I did, which is go absolute 1000% ham mode and run around the stage and you know just basically try to be Steve Vai from a David Lee Roth music video. Wouldn't totally recommend that to everybody. My other extreme was just standing there and kind of looking down at the ground and trying to be really cool and you know total shoegaze which didn't work great for me and now I'm kind of in the middle where I have my own little part of the stage and I just do my aerobics routine live and have a good time. I like to smile a lot and I like to Try to be in the moment as much as possible. One tip that I like, and I will offer this up as advice, is to find somebody in the audience, whether there's one person or whether you're playing to a packed room, who's really enjoying themselves and getting into the vibe and just watch that one person. 
I tend to like people who are kind of towards the back of the room because then that way when you're performing and you're not looking straight in front of you. So you find someone kind of towards the back and they become your barometer and you just really try to, you know, look at them. And if you make eye contact with them, that's even cooler because they're having a good time and you're having a good time and there's this positive feedback in there and you all have a really, really great time. Find that one person, I try to just really lock in with them and really enjoy the moment. And that's kind of what's special about live music. So that would be my one tip. Find one person, imagine you are just playing solely to them and give them 100% of your energy. And there's probably a bunch of other tips out there like wear comfortable shoes is a big one. Wear stuff that's comfortable or if you're gonna perform in clothes, like you're gonna perform with a leather jacket on, then practice playing with a leather jacket, you know, practice the way you intend to perform as my footy coach always said in under 15s, put it in slightly more colorful language than that, but that would be my advice for new performers. That is it for this week. Thank you all so much for this week's questions. I will have time to put together a Q&A next week before I go away, so get those questions in the comment section below. As always, if you wanna support what I do here on the channel, there's some stuff in the video description. You can follow some links, you can join my Patreon, buy some ragdoll music, buy a ticket to one of our upcoming shows, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers.